A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the, marks, the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have, and have believed. Now Jesus did many other si signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written down in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together in the upper room and the doors were locked because they were afraid. Let's put a split screen here. It's Holy Thursday night. They're gathered together in that same upper room. They've prepared the Passover meal uh, uh, and Jesus is there, but he goes off script a couple of times. He washes their feet. You probably did this uh, this Holy Thursday here in the parish. He gave them the precious gift of the Eucharist. This is my body. This is my blood. In the Gospel of John, there's long, long soliloquies. All his teachings are put in the, the Last Supper. But he says a couple of things. He says, all of you are going to let me down tonight. The, the strike the shepherd and the sheep are gonna are gonna be dispersed and they said no 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 we're, we're with you we've been on your side for a long long time he says so uh, he says that one of you will betray me and they said who cool. is it me not me I wouldn't do it and Peter who always puts his foot in his mouth and sometimes also gets the absolute right answer but he says, maybe the others will run away, but not Rocky, not the rock, Peter. Uh, I, I am willing to die for you. And Jesus kind of says, oh, Peter, oh, Peter. You just didn't want me to wash your feet, and now you want to wash everything. Uh, you're, you're so out of touch with your, with your, your own weakness. This very night, you're going to deny that you even know me. Not me. Impossible. Impossible. So, what I want to do with you today is, the Gospels are written 30 to 50 years, maybe 60 years after the events. And after 2,000 years, we routinely say the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As if, as if it was the most obvious and inevitable thing that you could ever imagine. But try to be in that upper room <laughs> that night and, and thinking there of all the things that had happened. Uh, 
Jesus asked them to, uh, to, to pray with him in the garden. And Peter and John and James go, but they had a couple of uh, uh, glasses of Manischewitz wine there at the, at the Passover, and they started to fall asleep. Jesus is in a terrible moment of, of his, his humanity and, and the God's plan are, are, are rubbing against each other. He, if this chalice of suffering cannot pass away, uh, please let it pass away. But if it can't, your will be done. He comes back. You're sleeping. You couldn't stay awake one hour. Still, wake up and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they fall asleep again. All right? And then Judas comes. Uh, there was one who was going to betray him. And it turned out that it was Judas. Uh, and he comes and he kisses him. Uh, rabbi. And he gives peace, Rabbi. And he gives him a kiss. There's a beautiful song. If you ever get a chance to hear it, it's called Why? by a, a, a Christian singer, but his name is Michael Carr. And he says this, why did it have to be a friend who betrayed the Lord? And why did it have to be a kiss? That's not what a kiss is for. But only a friend could betray a friend. Uh, the stranger has nothing to gain and only a friend can ever get close to, to cause so much pain. The betrayal of, of, of a friend. Peter takes out his sword and cuts off a guy's ear. And Jesus says, stop that. Oh, Peter, he puts the, 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 the guy's ear back on and, and they arrest him. And Peter and John have a little enough courage. They, they're, they're hiding in the, in the shadows as they bring Jesus to this uh, kangaroo court, this, this sham trial. Uh, and they're in there. And one uh, young girl says, wait a minute, you, you used to run, hang around with Jesus. He says, oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know who you're talking about. He says, no, no, listen, you, you have the same kind of accent that, that he has. I have an accent. Can you get where this from? It's, it's Brooklyn, but, it's, but there's a little bit of an Irish brogue. My father was, 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 so I got an accent. Everybody has an accent, accent. When, when I was stationed down here in Slower Lower, in Delaware, from 2005 to 2011, in Seaford, Delaware, I thought I was in Mayberry. <laughs> and they say, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> you know, and, and I'll lock your accent. It's, it, I'll lock your accent. You're from New York. I was there once, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I've never been called honey and sweetie as much in one week there as, as in my whole other life before. But that's another thing, all right? That, that was just a little side sidebar. Where am I? Oh, and one of the men says, it was my cousin's ear you, that you cut off. And he swears an oath by the living God and by his mother and everything that was holy. I don't even know the man. <laughs> I heard that a lot in Sussex County. <laughs> An awful lot, let me tell you. Uh, uh, and he goes out and, he, and he, whip, he, he weeps bitterly. And they all run back to the upper room, this place that had been so holy at one moment uh, becomes a, a hideout. They're there with locked doors. They're afraid, but you know, they were stewing in their own thoughts and feelings. Uh, ashamed. Shame is, a, is, is a, it, when we've done something wrong, uh, sometimes we just, we just drowning in shame. We let him die alone. We let him die alone. He knew me so well, and, and when push came to shove, I, I, I messed it up. I told him he shouldn't have chosen me. I told him, get depart from me. I'm a sinful man. I don't, don't, don't pick me. But he picked me, and I let him down, and they're all thinking, what comes now? Why are they afraid? If they could do this to Jesus, they could do this to anybody, really. Crucify them, what, what's the big deal? They crucified three people the day of Good Friday. So they're there all day Saturday, the day of rest. And then comes Easter Sunday morning. We heard the gospel last week. It said, 
very early in the morning, uh, before daybreak, uh, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. Maybe she came alone, but she probably came with the other women. They wanted to anoint the body of Jesus. They had to bury him so fast that he didn't get the proper rites. And they hadn't thought this out very well. They're, they're, they're walking along saying, wait a minute, who's going who's gonna to take that stone away? And they come, and it's already been rolled away. And they look inside, and they see that the tomb is empty. Do you know what they did not think right away? Hallelujah, he's risen from the dead. They didn't think that. What did they think? They said, somebody has stolen his body. She runs back to the upper room, banging on the door, and inside they're all afraid. It's, and she says, me, it's Mary. Open up, open up. And she says, uh, they've taken the Lord away. We don't know where he is. And Peter and John run to the tomb. John runs fast because he's young. Peter thought he was running fast. <laughs> he had a beer belly or whatever. <laughs> he gets there and they say, yeah, he's gone. But they don't think, hallelujah, he's risen from the dead. They go back and they don't know what, what's happening. Mary goes back to the tomb uh, and she's there weeping. Jesus had changed her life, and she's weeping. Now there's one thing about the risen Lord, and you're going to see this in all the, the Easter stories after the resurrection. He's himself, and he's different, both at the same time. He's himself, but he's also different, all right? And, and she's weeping, and she hears a voice, says, so, woman, why are you weeping? And she, this is what the gospel says, thinking he's the gardener, said, Sir, if you take him away, please tell me where he is so that I can go and give him a decent burial again. And what does it say? Jesus said one word, one name, Mary. A show of hands, how many of you are watching the series The Chosen? All right, first season, first episode, Mary Magdalene, who is going by an, an assumed name uh, and living a life that's very, very chaotic. Her, her name was Lilith, her stage name or whatever, you know. But, uh, and in the very beginning of that, uh, she's a little girl. This is like a flashback. And, and she's afraid that her father, who looks like he's sick, says, what do we say when we're, we're afraid? And she says, Thus says the Lord God who created you and he who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, and you are mine. She wants to take her own life, uh, but she goes back and she says, if I can't take my own life, I'm going to get drunk. And she's there. <laughs> Where does she meet Jesus? In a bar, right? In a tavern. And she's about ready to, 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 to drown her sorrows. And this is the first time you see Jesus in this whole series. He says, that's not for you. She says, leave me alone. She starts running away. And Jesus, she's running away in the, in, the, in the forefront. And in the back is Jesus, who calls her by name, Mary, Mary of Magdala. Thus says the Lord God who created you and he who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you called you by name, and you are mine. Now, I'm a, I'm a big guy, but I cry at this moment. I just, that is so, that is so what I love about Jesus and that I want to communicate to everybody. She falls in his arms. Today at the gospel, she wants to fall in his arms again. He says, uh, Mary, it's, it's going to be different now, but I want you to go and tell them that you saw me and that, and, and that there, I'm going to see them in a little while in Galilee. So she goes back. Now before the Chosen, my favorite Jesus movie was called uh, G, uh, Jesus of Nazareth by Franco Zeffirelli. It was made in 1977, the year I was ordained. Do the math. Subtraction. <laughs> uh, 
And the woman who played the part, there was lots of well-known actors in this, and one of the well-known ones was uh, Anne Bancroft. She played Mary Magdalene. She was, here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> She is a, a, a tough Italian girl, and she, she, she was married to Mel Brooks for a lot, a lot of years. That must have been a great marriage. <laughs> but, but in this one, she says, uh, uh, the scriptures say this, that, that when she says, he's alive, I saw him, and he said to go to Galilee. And the scriptures say this, they thought it was a woman's tale. <laughs> you know women, they're just so hysterical and emotional. Slurred her, swatted her away like she was a, a, a mosquito bothering her. And Mrs. Robinson really came through. She says, he sent me here to tell you and you don't believe? Well, I did my part. He believes and he's gonna see you again. Mary Magdalene has gotten a bad rap by many, many preachers through many, many centuries. But what she is in this is the first apostle to the apostles. Uh, and uh, she tells us the story. Well, there were 10 people in that upper room. Uh, uh, Judas had hung himself and Thomas, we don't know where he is, but one week later, he's there. You didn't know this, but Thomas was from Missouri. <laughs> the show me state. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I have a soft spot for, for, for Thomas. I, I, I really do, you know. I remember being a, a, as a kid uh, after President Kennedy was shot when, or when uh, 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 Marilyn Monroe uh, died and, and, uh, and Elvis Presley and I would be in a, a, a candy store and I'd see the National Enquirer who said, he real, Elvis really faked his death. He was so tired of all the publicity that somebody saw him fishing in a, in a remote lake in, 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 in Minnesota. And I didn't believe that for a moment. President Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe, they, they eloped. And, and now they're living in, 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 in uh, Sweden. Uh, you know, they didn't die, they, they faked it. That's the way, it's, that, that's the, how, the craziness of this, what, what Thomas said. You're saying that, that he's dead, and you're saying that he's alive? That's not imp uh, possible. And he makes that great statement, unless I, unless you show me, unless I put my fingers in his wounds, uh, I, I will not believe. Uh, and a week later, guess what? Jesus comes and says, uh, Thomas, I've got some things to talk about here. <laughs> okay? uh, you needed to, to see my wounds. Uh, and please remember that he has wounds. That's, that's the, that, that, uh, that he is who he is, but he is different. All right? uh, and he says, put your fingers in there and and." Do not be unbelieving, but believing be. And he says that beautiful prayer, my Lord and my God. If you ever read the Spanish Mass, uh, Spanish people a lot of times when, when they're having the elevation of the bread and wine, you might hear them say, Señor mío y Dios mío, that, that very prayer of Jesus. But then Jesus said something so, so wonderful for all and each of you. You believe, Thomas, because you saw and you touched. Blessed are those good people in St. Christopher's Church in Chester, Maryland, who, who without seeing still believe. Thank you for your faith, dear brothers and sisters. And thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who came to save us. Christ has indeed died. I like the older translation better. And Christ is risen, and we pray that we will one day be together and see him again. Please stand.